Magic Mike Show, where you hear the experts speak. The Magic Mike Show, tune into the show every week. The Magic Mike Show, you can trust the show is the bomb because it's being brought to you by RacingDudes.com. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the Magic Mike Show. I mean, you obviously recognize me, Mike Samich, back. Where is Curtis Kellowar, you might ask? Well, Magic is a little bit under the weather after battling COVID. We've got something else going on. So Aaron Halterman just happily jumped in for him. I appreciate it, man. I love the, 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 the description of he's got something else going on. We're not quite sure what it is. He's fine. He's alive. We just saw him. But yeah, uh, he was not camera ready today. No, no I, I have a feeling he will be back for Thursday, but uh, no guarantees on that. Hopefully, we'll have magic on Thursday. Well, I am already planning Thursday, just in case. <laughs> you ready to jump in go for the five the five bagger on Thursday again? Yes, yes. Definitely the five bagger for me on a Thursday. No, hopefully he's back and, and well. Uh, yeah, he, he's feeling good. That's the good news. I think COVID is gone, basically, but uh, now, now we're dealing with other issues, so... <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm excited to have you on here, man. We've got a monster recap weekend. We were just talking about before we came on here. We're going to talk about the three preps for the Classic first. Go over that field. Talk a little bit more about the Classic in depth. And we're going to jump around and talk about all these winning your ends, which there are like a million of them. So we're going to go through those pretty quickly, kind of hit the highlights of each one of those. Uh, before we jump into it, uh, real quick, a personal update. I don't talk about the personal stuff all that often here. I've had a ton of people reach out in the last week. Uh, as a lot of people know, I moved to Sanibel Island in June. Uh, we evacuated on Monday. Uh, it's been a pretty rough week, to be honest with you. Uh, kind of got the island got nailed on Wednesday, uh, and we cannot go home right now. So we're going to be displaced for probably about three or four months. So we're okay. Family's fine. We've got a ton of people that reached out, asked how we're doing. Um, we, we're lucky. We, we kind of had somewhere else to go during the storm, and we found a place that we can be for four months while we wait for the island to be inhibitable again and, and be able to go back there because we love it. We cannot wait to get out there. Um, it's tough because every day you kind of get a little bit more bad news about something. Uh, and yesterday's was specifically about my daughter's school. Uh, it was in 12 to 18 foot storm surge, and they don't know when it's going to be able to be reopened or how well it's going to do. Uh, it's a nonprofit school for kids between the age of 12 and five. And one of the things they asked for was specifically donations. Uh, and that was the second question I got. Hey, if I want to help out specifically on the island, how can I do it to a charity that will directly kind of help the island versus kind of some gigantic charity like the Red Cross, which does wonderful work. Um, well, they asked for donations yesterday because it, they are a nonprofit. And since there are no kids there, they are not receiving any money. Um, and they have seven teachers who all lived on island and who are all displaced for the next three to four months. And when they actually get to go back to their home, they don't get to go back to teaching. So they are trying to pay their salaries uh, for the next four months or so um, and also rebuild the school. So if anyone would like to help, uh, the school is called. Let me pull this down real quick. So let me get that out of your way there. There you go. Uh, the school is called uh, the CECI, Children's Educational Center of the Islands. Uh, like I said, it's a nonprofit. So if anyone does want to donate, it's completely tax deductible. If you don't, I totally get it, completely understand. But I wanted to make sure I gave people an option to kind of directly help Sanibel in that sense. Um, also, if you don't want to donate or you cannot donate, but you want to help out in some way, uh, if you go to Amazon, specifically Amazon Smile, um, you can choose Children's Education Center for the Islands there, and half of a percent of any money you spend on Amazon gets directly donated to the school. So it's a really cool way to do what you're doing, but be able to help the school out as well. Uh, if you go to smile.amazon.com, uh, you're able to do that. And then anytime you purchase anything, you have to start on that smile.amazon.com page to be able to help out. So I just want to kind of give a quick life update, uh, what's going on there, and then also how you can help out if you are interested in helping out in that sense. And very, like, very thankful for everybody who reached out. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Uh, it's been quite a week, but uh, excited to have the distraction of work and be able to talk about these horses and get to see everybody in the chat and hang out. Yeah, it's uh, it was crazy. When we were on the live show Wednesday on the Dudes Who Bet Daily, you were showing me the live cams of Sanibel Island and kind of the one in your area where you were, it, it didn't look too bad. I mean, it was it was windy and rainy and we did a 20 minute show. And we got off the air and you were like, oh, my God. And then the water had gotten there and it was, I mean, pretty much underwater. So, yeah, uh, definitely. If you guys can help, that would be great. Like I said, if you can't, it's understandable. But there's a lot of people down there that, that are going to need uh, help. And, and yeah, unfortunately, your community there specifically, gosh, it just it does not look good. But, um, you know, they'll, they'll, they're going to they're going to rebuild. You know, they will. It's just going to take time. Yep. And we can't wait to get back down there and help. And that's, you know, as soon as everyone's yeah. let on the island, that's what we're going to do right now. They're picking up power poles, making sure it's safe. There's yep. no running water. There's you know, no, no sewage, nothing like that. So 
it's tough right now, but uh, we'll be back and we'll rebuild and we cannot wait. It's an awesome community. Very cool place to visit if you've never been there. Wonderful shelling, great wildlife. Uh, it's, it's absolutely exceptional. So uh, looking forward to getting back to normal in that sense, but uh, all is well with the family. Thank you very much for everyone checking in. Um, and I appreciate all the support. Uh, now, I know that's not why you're here, so let's jump into the horse racing side of this as well. Uh, like I said, we've got a monster weekend that we're going to recap here. Oh, real quick, I'm going to throw that up on Twitter as well for anyone with links. So if you yeah. wanted that, it will be on Twitter as well for anyone listening to the podcast forum. Go check out at Samabom18. You can see uh, all the links that I just discussed. Uh, and if anyone has questions about setting up smile.amazon.com, feel free to DM me. I'm more than happy to help people uh, set it up so that it is uh, CECI, SESI, that gets the donations on Amazon as well. All right. Now it's out of the way. Let's talk about uh, these horse races, Aaron. We've got just three phenomenal races, first off, in that classic division. Let's talk about those first. And let's kind of kick it off here. And I'm going to pull up the stakes results page for the weekend. If you don't use this, this is a great page, uh, which I'm going to have to zoom in a little bit here. Um, over on DRF, it gives you the full results for every stakes over the weekend. And it also gives you um, the specifically the... Uh, the payouts as well as the buyer figure. So we're just going to pull this up for these races. We'll start with the grade one Woodward, which is probably the least interesting of these three races. So we'll kind of kick it off here. Uh, life is good, looks dominant, goes gate to wire. Law professor runs second, keep me in mind, runs third. Most frustrating part about this race for me, Aaron, I couldn't bet the try. I tried to get this try out on Do to Bet Daily and freaking the three horse Thomas Shelby scratches out and all of a sudden there's no tries. And this thing was never anything but one, two, four in this race. Yeah, I feel terrible that you didn't be able to do that try because you had it. You, you went all about it. And then right before we got there, we look at the scratches and there's no try now because a horse scratched out of a five horse field. Here's the deal. A couple things. Uh, one betting lesson before I talk about this uh, race specifically for the classic. OK, you, you said it right. You're on the on the uh, show. You're like, well, I'm not going to do it because it's going to be I'm not going to do a one, two exacto. That's going to be way too chalky. Always check the probables. This thing paid three to one for a one to exact day. And if you would have known that, you would have been all over it on the show. So oh. always check the probables. It paid more than three to one, didn't it? It paid 350. Okay. It paid, like this was essentially a seven to two shot that you got yep. for finishing in second place here. And just to, to piggyback on that, you're literally getting seven to two in a match race. Yep. Informative was never running second. Nope. So it was either keep me in mind or law professor. Even if you think keep me in mind is twice as likely, seven to two is a massive overlay on that exacta price. We were on the live stream, Magic and I, about four minutes to post. We were talking, okay, how do you make money? I said, hold on, let me just check these exactas, will pays. I know they're going to be shitty, but let me check them. Checked them. Okay, life is good. Keep me in mind was paying like a dollar something. And then this one, life is good, law professor was paying like 350 at the time, which is, I guess it, it ended up that way. I, I stopped the show. I said, bet it now. That yeah. is that because this is the most likely second place finisher. These odds are wrong. And so you just always check that because sometimes you get that value. And, you know, you could have bet a law professor to show it pays 390 or you could play that exacta. And let's see, for $2, that would have been almost $7. So always be thinking about stuff like that. Don't just assume in a one to nine race, there's no value. There's no money to be made. This was one of our better bets of the day as it ended up. So it worked out. But yeah, as far as the classic goes, this is not really what I wanted to see from Life is Good. I did not think he ran all that well in this race. I, I talked about Nick's go last year in the Lucas Classic and how, sure, didn't have a great time or a great, great number, but boy, he finished strong. And it's like, oh, he's ready. I did not get the same vibe from Life is Good. What about you? Yeah, this is not how you want a one to nine to win. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I didn't think he was ever going to lose, but it definitely like I wasn't ready to, to close the laptop at the 16th pole either. Like it was law professor started to grind him down a little bit. And you're kind of like, oh, man, we, we, we kind of dismissed some of the issues overseas as saying it wasn't the distance, that it was more of the early pace that was there. I, I was a little concerned with the distance there because like it, there really was no reason for him to face any pressure here. We're talking 24, 48, 113. This is something life is good to be able to do in his sleep. And yeah. uh, not exactly flying home. Uh, I, it could have been a little bit of the rain. It was kind of a nasty track. The Whitney kind of had a little bit of wet, nasty track too. Yeah, I'm with Christopher. If anything's behind him, I think he loses. Like imagine if an epicenter or a Taba was behind him. Forget about flight line. Forget about that for a second. I don't know how he holds those horses off the way he looked. They kind of had to ask him to get away from Law Professor. Now, to his credit, he he won, and it was, like you said, he never really thought he was going to lose. But you also were like, damn, I'm glad he only faced four today. It did not look good. 
Yeah, that, that and, and it, like it was a logical exact because you have the OTs brothers too. There was no pressure because law professor was the only other horse to compress. You know, the comment uh, someone brought up in here if Thomas Shelby, this is Dennis bringing chiming in, if Thomas Shelby's in the race, I feel like the horse might have cost life is good the race. I, I, life is good definitely would have gone faster earlier, which I don't think necessarily would have been a bad thing for life is good. Like, yeah. you kind of want to, Nick's go would just wreck people early with that speed, right? And Flightline, even if he wants to, can do that to people. And, and life is good has generally done that to people. And this time, going this slow, I think may have been detrimental to his overall race. It, he should have went a little faster. I agree, and that's that's what he's his strength is is to to, to bury him. The only thing is, last year in his Breeders' Cup prep, they kind of slowed him down a bit, and then he got to the stretch, and he just said, "See ya," and it was gone. Right. So, still, yeah, he could have went faster and buried him, and maybe it's a bigger margin. Uh, but again. He kind of got to the top of the stretch. Here comes Law Professor. Okay, let's ask him. And that's when I was expecting to see a burst and about a five mm. or six link gap and just kind of keep that margin the whole way. And it just didn't happen. Law Professor was sticking with him, within range of him at least. Again, he was never in, in doubt of losing. But yeah, I mean, you go watch the reaction video Magic and I did. Top of the stretch, we're like, I don't know. Like he hasn't done anything to really separate himself Go watch his other races, and that's not the case. So it's a pretty big red flag for me, especially with the challenge that's waiting out there for him. And Chris just shooting, just shots fired here at Life is Good, saying Zandon could have beaten him if uh, if he was in that spot. I, it would have been really I, – I would not sit here and say for sure Life is Good would have beaten Zandon on Saturday. <laughs> I can't say it either because I think Zandon's better than law professor, you know? And again, was he, was he trying? Did they really ask him? Yeah. They kind of asked him a little bit. Yeah. That's the problem. Like if he would have, would have been in a hammer lock the whole time. And it's like, well, yeah, he was close, but look at this horse. He's ready to explode. They're just not letting him kind of got after him a little bit, you know? So I'm pretty worried and I'm a huge fan of his huge, but I'm yeah. worried. Yeah. Just, just a little bit. We'll see. Uh, yeah. Uh, we'll see what happens here. Kevin brings up a really good question, and we'll don't answer this right now, Aaron, because we're going to answer this after okay. we look talk about all three races. So before this result, what do you think flight line at post time was going to be, and after these races, what do you think he's going to be? So what we thought flight would be on Friday, and then what we think flight line will be now today that we've seen these races. So let's jump ahead here. Let's head over to Santa Anita, um, where we will talk about. Do do do. Scrolling through here. <laughs> Other way. No, see, this is Sunday. the problem. This is the problem. Now, see, I, like Magic is so much better at this. I'm just filling in here and trying to not look like a total donkey. We already failed that one. There oh, it man. is. Hey, look at that. It's the Awesome Again Stakes from Santa Anita. Grade one. We got Defunded here who ends up beating your short price country grammar. Uh, your two other horses that you would expect to be somewhere in here. Uh, Express Train Rail Ship, nowhere to be found. Uh, Azul Coast runs last. Thanks very much, buddy. Uh, Baffert puts four and gets the, the exacta. Uh, what's your takeaway from this? Um, I think country grammar, Royal ship and express train may be kind of washed up is what I thought of this. I mean, they, none of these horses really fired country grammar got second in this race by default. I mean, he didn't run just like an awful race, but mid or mid turn, they start scrubbing on him and he's like making up a, a centimeter on these. Sort, and I'm like, yeah, he's not firing. And he's, he doesn't look very good. The number came back. Putrid. Accurate. I mean, that's not good for a great round. Yeah. So, I, I, I mean, a lot of people are like, well, he really, he just needs a, he needs a mile and a quarter. I mean, BS. His mile and eighth races were were far better than what he ran that day, and that his regular mile and eighth race would have won. I mean, I think he's he's gone down, and maybe the flight line thing kind of messed him up. Maybe he's just lost form. I don't have any interest in any of these horses going forward. Uh, pretty brutal. Um, I, I was really puzzled why Baffert entered four. Now we know why Baffert entered four. Yeah. Country grammar is just not that good. And that that really was the the defining piece of information that I took away from this race. I was never betting Express Train. I was never betting Tripoli. I was never betting Royal Ship. I, it was never betting any of these horses. I still won't bet to fund it or slow down Andy in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Country grammar could have gotten some money from me, specifically underneath. Um, I was never putting him on top, but he could have gotten some underneath money from, from me. And now, I mean, we'll see if he even goes. I, I would assume he's going to still go. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. Obviously, table will be pointing there from the Baffert stable. You've got flight line is going to be in there. It's going to be a very, very tough field. Do you think we're going to end up seeing country grammar there? Maybe because he's Baffert and it's like, what else are you going to do with him? Just take him and then you can put him 
you know, retire him and right there at Keeneland. He got to make the trip over there anyway, most likely at to Lexington. So, yeah, I think we'll see him, but I don't know what we're going to, you know, I don't know what that means. I mean, he, he looks washed to me. I mean, he just, he looked terrible in this race and I know he got second in a grade one, but he looked bad in this. I mean, he just, there was no acceleration whatsoever. And we got uh, this one, this race finished in a one minute, 49 seconds and 38 uh, hundredths of a second. The brace at Belmont finished 130, 149, 57. So just slightly slower at Belmont, even though the conditions were significantly worse and that track was slow all weekend. So the time doesn't come back very good either here on a track. You would kind of expect that they would have pasted the time that they had at, at, at Aqueduct as well. Well, usually at Santa Anita, your times are faster anyway, even if Aqueduct's got a, got a fast track. So yep. That's pretty damning of this time, to say the least. And usually you see, I, in my opinion, you see some pretty inflated buyers in these uh, races at uh, at, at uh, Santa Anita. So for that to come back that slow, that's that's rough. Yeah, not good. Uh, so the Funded ends up here winning uh, the awesome again, grade one over at Santa Anita. I wouldn't be shocked if the Funded goes and we have another pace presence, although I don't think the Funded can actually keep up with the horses that are going to be on the lead in that race. So we'll see what happens. Baffert's going to have at least one with Taba there. We'll talk about him and the rest of the field in a second. But before we get there, I saved the best for last. And I can't even believe I'm saying that because of the horses that were in here. But this was by far the most interesting race of the day. Right, Aaron? It was. It was a great race. I enjoyed this race thoroughly. I'm so glad we were on the air for this one because just to catch Magic and I's just crazy reactions of this. Look, Hot Rod Charlie could lose to anyone in the stretch, right? <laughs> it, but he's just a battler and a fighter. Rich Strike comes next to him, passes him. I'm like, oh my gosh, Rich Strike's back in the winner's circle. And then somehow Hot Rod Charlie <laughs> re-rallies and gets him. This was fantastic to watch. This is This is one of my most, like, one of the most... Uh, memorable races of the year so far, in my opinion. Uh, Rich Strike just continues to surprise you. I mean, uh, from a, a effort and talent perspective, great race, Con ran really well. I, I'm like, I'm still going to bet against this horse pretty much every time he runs. Yeah. But then, like, afterward, they're saying that the saddle slipped, and that's why you had Leon just leaning all the way in on Gaff, like, out of the screen on Gaff Leon to the point where Gaff Leon, when they cross lines, like, what the hell, dude? Like, he looks over at him, like, he's going to get shoved off, like that European jockey. It was just crazy. I I don't understand. Okay, maybe the saddle slipped, although he got suspended 15 days, so I don't think Churchill really agrees with that. But I think if he just would have rode the horse, he would have won. I think because you see, it's right at the wire when 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 uh, Hot Rod Charlie kind of re rallies, so to speak, and wins. And I think it was it coincided with what he was doing, leaning over like that. So I I think Rich Strike maybe would have won this race without that. I I don't know. Uh, there's got to be some reason Hot Rod Charlie decided to win a close race, right? So that it, it could have been that. I, yeah. This was wild. This was absolutely wild. So we got the replay up here. Here we go. Because I wanted to pull this one up of all the races that we had over the weekend because it, it is a crazy race. And I wanted to say, like, one of the things that I thought was really interesting here was where Rich Strike was positioned. Because uh, there's a comment in here, you, Rich Strike always needs to get that set up. I don't disagree with Car Ramrod. I do think he needs the right setup. But this is a 23-second pace. And Rich Strike is four lengths, five lengths off the lead here around the first turn. That was the part I was probably most impressed with Rich Strike here is that he said it is a different dimension for him being this close. Dude, and I think it made all the difference in the world, right? I mean, we talk about all the time. You really don't want to be a dead closer. That's really tough to do. And, and again, when we were watching the race, we said the same thing. We're like, wow, he's within range and he's also yeah. off the rail. And so that, that kind of busts that myth. Cause that's crazy. A horse can only run on the rail. I never believed that for a second. He's off the rail. He's off the rail the whole time. This was a really good race from him. I, he's yeah. not going to win the Breeders' Cup Classic, but this was a really good race from him. Well, and, and if we we'll, we'll, we'll go into the Breeders' Cup Classic soon, but I mean, Hot Rod Charlie is like locked in for fourth, right? Like that's pretty much where he's going to yeah. finish fourth or fifth in that race. Rich Strike finishing fourth or fifth is completely plausible after this race. Now that is at Keeneland, and we have seen his two best races now at Churchill. His, his Travers effort was was good as well. But yep. his two best races have been at Churchill. Are you concerned at all horse for course with the wrist strike part? I mean, a little bit, for sure. I, 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 he definitely runs a, a, an improved race at Churchill Downs. That's three times in a row now. He should have won this race. Uh, so, yeah, I, I am concerned about that. But like you said, he did go up to Saratoga and run awfully well. So uh, there's a little bit of hope. Look, he's it, it's tough. He's not he's, quite. He looks gone here right now. It looks like he's gone. <laughs> I've got a $5 double on, on hot rod and I'm ripping it up at this point. <laughs> okay. 
and that's like a lot of people like, wow, you were really shocked. I was like stunned that I won and stunned that he won and just I couldn't believe it. Yeah. I, I told Magic at the top, I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna lose the hot I'm gonna lose a rich strike. You know, <laughs> this is crazy. So yeah, I kept going though. I mean, and as crazy as Hot Rod Charlie battles back, a horse that just seems to not be able to win makes the front, and you can see why he doesn't win because he just kind of stopped going when he made the front. And that's why Rich Strike goes right on by. And then all of a sudden he re rallies when he realizes he's in second. I said at the top of the stretch, Magic's like, he's gone. I'm like, no, he's not. He should be gone. He has the talent to be gone. He won't. This will be a nut cutter. And it was. And like, like I said, right here, it's like, oh, Rich Strike's going to win this race. But look, they're separated. And now this is when he starts to lean in. Yeah. That, that even if he just runs straight, you may not get the same response from Hot Rod Charlie either just from a, a digging in perspective and a challenge perspective. Because when they get close, horses get challenged and some of them shrink in that and some of them bow up and want to win. And you clearly saw Hot Rod Charlie decide he wanted to win as soon as Rich Strike came onto his, onto his hind quarters. And you've seen it for two years. He likes that. He likes that challenge and running with another horse. So yeah, if you're far away from him, stay away from him. I mean, it, I don't know. Maybe the, I, I'm not a jockey and never been, never will be. Maybe the saddle did slip. He is Church leaning of hard. Agree. Yeah. I mean, I'm sitting here watching this guy. He leans right into his ass. He's just being an idiot. And I think he cost Rich Strike the win, yeah. to be completely honest. I think he cost him. Man, Rich Strike's a lot smaller than Hot Rod Charlie. I didn't realize it until that specific replay that we watched right there. Uh, so that that was probably the most interesting race from just a, a what happened perspective, but also just, just the result. I thought it was really – it was to me, the the I was really impressed with Rich Strike. And I, I could see – I could see Country Grammar losing. This one I thought was surprising. I thought Rich Strike was going to win that race, which would have made the Breeders' Cup really interesting because you know he would have gotten steam heading in there. And it would have made the question we got earlier from Kevin even more interesting, which we're going to address now. Uh, by the way, Hot Rod Charlie, Rich Strike both get 101 buyers. The high buyer of any of those three races was 101. Flight line runs a little bit quicker than that. Just, just a little bit quicker. Uh, I, I tweeted my main takeaway from the day was that flight line is going to be one to nine because absolutely nothing that ran yesterday or Saturday is going to beat him or over the weekend. Yeah. Um, let's talk about what we were expecting price wise from flight line on Friday in the Breeders' Cup Classic before any of these races ran. I thought two to five or one to two was a fair price on flight line. So minus 200, minus 250, somewhere in that range going into the weekend. What was where was your head at? Same. I thought one to two. That, that's a that's a number that's been in my mind for a while. Thought, well, maybe if we get lucky, he'll float up to three to five. But one to two is probably where I, I expect him to land. Yeah. Okay. So we're, we're both in that same range. Now, mm -hmm. after these three races and why this is important, you pretty much eliminate every horse except two that can win the race outside of flight line at this point. Now, I think he's got to be one to five. I, I really do. I don't, I don't, maybe you could make a case for two to five. Um, one to nine, I think is not never going to happen in this big of a profile race, depending on the field size, but assuming epicenter and Taylor are both there, I think you're looking around one to five, maybe two to five. I think you still might get two to five because it is the classic. And I, it's just, it's hard to wrap your mind around the horse being one to five. He should be. I'm with you on that. I would not be shocked at all. But yeah, I think Taba and Epicent are going to keep gaining a little bit of steam. And that's good because the Travers has come back so well. I mean, the horses are running really well out of that Travers. And Taba beat those horses that are that they came back to run well out of the Travers. Pretty similar to Epicenter. So at least you've got two Horses that are going to take a little bit of money. I think everybody's going to probably jump off. Life is good in this situation now. You're right. It's probably going to be two to five, one to five. I mean, it, it's hard to argue that. And listen, he should be. He he's you said it. He's running. I mean, the high buyer was a one on one. He runs out in his sleep. You know, yep. and the problem is Taba ran a great buyer one oh eight, and Epicenter got a one twelve. He's still a lot faster than that. And that's people bet buyers more than they do anything else. So I, I don't know how you get around it. Uh, there's going to be a lot of $2 win tickets on, on, uh, on him as well. The people just want to keep the $2 win ticket as a souvenir of flight line. Uh, if he does win this race. So I, I it's going to be a lot of money just pouring in on flight line. Um, I, I love this question. And, and to me, you know, I'm going to be playing the BCBC. And you, you know, last year, my strategy, my whole strategy, trying to get $40,000 to Nick's go so I could win the tournament. Would have worked if it got there. I didn't get there. My whole strategy is going to try and get to $40,000 to play an exact in this race <laughs> with flight line cold over either table or epicenter, or if I need to play a cold try with these three horses. Listen, I, 
I never would have dreamed life is good. Law professor would have paid three and a half to one. Yep. I, I honestly, I, I would not think it's going to pay that much for that exacta. But if it does, I'm absolutely hammering it. We have seen this week after week after week after week with these exactas. And it's like, this is the play. Like, you, you've really, we've learned that. It's been, it's just been, a, it's been a standout. Every, like the flight line country grammar exacta in the, in the Pacific Cla Classic paid like two, two and a half to one. So, hey, that's a, you're right. I mean, that's, that's what you got to do. You got to choose between tape and epicenter. That's the, that's the strategy. You can't play them both. So you got to go flight line over one of them and, and it's the play. And maybe the play is whichever one's paying the best. I don't know because Tabe and Epicenter look very similar to me. Who do you think is the second choice right now? So overseas right now, flight line minus 200, which is one to two, which by the way, I would not bet flight line minus 200 um, in this spot, mainly because um, and this is right here. Kevin B says it messed up to root for a minor setback to flight line. When he's healthy, he wins this easy. If he's not in the race, it's going to be a really good race. I'm not going to root for the minor setback, but you're, you're dead on. I mean, if he's not in this race, it's a really wide open race. Um, but that's also why I'm not betting minus 200. I, I cannot take minus 200 on a horse that has had too many setbacks in his career. There's nothing that's indicating it. But if you're going to get somewhere around that price on race day, laying it now seems like just a, a asking for trouble. Yeah. No, and it just listen, as a rule, one to two, it's that's when you got to say no to win bets. I mean, yeah, it, it's it's just it's not worth it. Anything can happen. So and, and again, especially when we have said time after time in the last couple of months how you can create value on a short price. That's how you do it. And if you miss one that's paying three to one and then the next one's paying three to one, you're still ahead of the game versus betting horses at two to five to win, even if you hit both of them. So anyway. Well, well, and that that exact that exactly that we talked about with life is good. That was the easiest seven to two shot the entire day, Ever. the entire day. You like mm -hmm. that? You have to think of it that way. That's a seven to two shot that you just walked home for free, even though it's a three and a half to one exact that pays the exact same way as a seven to two winning a race would. All right, Aaron. Question. For, so answer my second choice right now in the Breeders' Cup. Who you got? I would think it's going to be Epicenter. It is currently Epicenter. Five to one is your second choice. Third choice. Who you got? Well, it has to, in my mind. It's Taba. It is not. It is life is good at seven to one. Yeah. And see, he, I can't believe I'm even going to say this out loud because th I think this horse is one of the more elite horses we've seen in a while. I really do. I think he's up there with some of the really good ones in the last 10 years. He's kind of a takeout reducer in this race, in my opinion. I don't think he has a chance to win. So that's good. Hopefully he takes money for our plays. You know, if you like him, I get it. I understand. I like him too. But for this race, I don't think he should be that price. No, I think it's ridiculous. I was trying to show that, but I don't know how to expand it. Uh, I'll just read through these rests real quick for you. Taba, 8-1. to one, Defunded, 12-1. to one, Olympiad, 12-1. to one, Hot Rod Charlie, 14-1. to one, Art Collector, 18-1. to one, Cyberknife, 18-1. to one, Rich Strike, 18-1. to one, Country Grammar, 22-1. to one, Happy Saver, 25-1. to one, And then Dr. Post at 50-1. to one. You want any piece of Dr. Post? Dr. Post? I know. I can't believe he's on here. Talk about I don't it. think he's even in training, is he? <laughs> Tis the bomb, also 50 to 1, if you want to talk about a takeout reducer. Um, yeah. <laughs> it, it's going to be pretty tough here. I, I, It's going to be all about the exact. I agree with you. I think Tabor should be the second choice. Well, actually, I disagree with you. I think Tabor should be the second choice. I think he's the second best horse um, from an upside perspective. I think Tabor is the only one that can beat him. I don't think Epicenter can beat him. I, okay. I'm not going to argue like who should be second choice. Cause I agree. They're absolutely, I mean, they're, they're alike, but I don't know that I agree that he's, well, first of all, neither one of them can beat him. If he fires his a plus race, they are running for second. Yes. If he, if he fires his B plus race they're they can't. Beat him. I think, I think Tabor could beat his a minus if he improves as much as I think he could. You really think, I don't understand why you think Tabor is going to improve. Because I don't think Tabor has figured it out mentally. And if he figures it out mentally, there's a lot more talent in there. I thought he figured it out pretty well last time. That's the that's kind of my rebuttal to it. I think we're seeing what he is now. I don't well, know if you're going to see that huge jump. I think we saw it in that last race. That was really good last time out. That was really good. And his I think his 108 was legit. I think Epicenter's 112 was not. We, well, I we, think we, they kept the same. Yeah, I think they're the same horse. And I, I think Epicenter, we kind of know. he's he's. I don't see Epicenter improving any more than, than a marginal amount. I think Taba could still improve by 5%. And if he can, that all of a sudden puts him in that mid-110s, which puts him in the the, the running for if uh, if you don't see Flight Line's A-plus game to be able to get him. Yeah, I, I do agree that Taba has made – or not Taba, uh, Epicenter has made the jump right before our eyes, right? 
And so maybe the Travers was like that extra race where now Taba's getting his extra race, so to speak, in the classic to come into the, to what their full potential is at this point. That's possible. I, I get it. I, I just think epicenter, you know, is battle tested and you don't really have to worry about that mental aspect with him where Taba, it's still, you know, what's he going to do out there? He's, he's kind of quirky. So I get it though. He, I think Taba does have more upside. I I'm with you on that, on that, on that part. But right now at this point, I think epicenter might be a little better. It's going to be tough because I, I'm, this is one of those where I'm going to have to decide who I'm playing in that exact or playing the yeah. whole try. And it's it, it's nip and tuck between the two. I mean, and, and that's it's kind of the fun part. I mean, it, it is – I cannot wait to see Flightline in person. I've never seen Flightline in person. I, I'm absolutely pumped up, ecstatic, cannot wait to see him. Yeah. It would be really interesting if he wasn't in this race because this would be a very interesting betting race to close out the betting classic and that, that, that two-day card without Flightline in this spot. It'd be fun if they're just like, hey, Flightline, here's $5 million. Don't run. Like you can run your by yourself when this race is over. Let's have the others go. We'll bet on that version of it. I've said it. I've said that a while too. It's like this would be an, an astonishing race, right? Because with life is good, you know, he it is Keeneland and it is speed favoring, and he might get out there. And then what happens? Like I'm banking on life is good. If he gets past, he'll be like, Ugh, I don't want to do this anymore because we've seen it, right? So yeah, yeah, I mean, he but he would come back into play because it's be, will he get past if flight line's not in the race? So. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, it's it's interesting. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough to, to, to choose between those two. And it's interesting because Joel Rosario's on Epicenter and Mike Smith's on Taba, so there's no real you know advantage one way or nothing other there. So it it will be fascinating to see how that thing unfolds for a second. It's it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be interesting to see how they take the track. It's gonna be interesting to see how Keeneland's playing. Last time we were at Keeneland. Thing was a merry-go-round. You had to be forwardly placed. So you got to keep that in mind as well um, with some of these horses. We're going to try and make a run from off the pace and flight line is going to sit right there on top of it. Real quick questions in the chat. I don't know the answer to these, Aaron. Do you? Uh, is this flight line's last race? Or are we going to see him continue that that trend that we've seen with the Pegasus, go overseas and retire after the big money races? They said he's running as a four-year-old. Now, whether that's true or not, we'll see. So supposedly, no, this will not be his last race. Cool. I like I like it. The more we get, the better we're, uh, we are as a sport. You need these yep. superstars. Even when they win on these days like this at, at really short prices, it brings a lot of people to the track and it gets people talking. I mean, I got asked to do interviews after Flightline one last time because mm -hmm. they wanted to talk about Flightline and the Breeders' Cup Classic. That's important for our sport. Uh, so it's nice to have these superstars running. And yeah, uh, it, five year old. Yeah. He was, he's a four year old this year. So well, that's, what I, that's what I mean. Yeah. Right. I knew it. Yeah. Wasn't yeah, worried about it. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, go ahead, Aaron. You look like you want to say something. Well, no, I was going to say that the anytime that question's asked, it's always, yeah, he's coming back as a four year old because they're talking about a three year old usually. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, sorry. <laughs> right, nail on the head. They all, they rarely do you hear those horses come back at five. Generally, it's over after they turn four. All right. Yep. Let's talk about the rest of the win in your in stakes. We're going to kind of fly through these a little bit. We'll kick it off here in uh, with the Frazette. This was on Saturday at Belmont from the Big A. Chocolate Gelato gets the job done here as your favorite. Man, this horse is frustrating to me. Uh, absolutely got bet down, and I loved on debut and lost. I did not single the second time out and won like a freak. And here, I did not use as the bet of the day at 8-5, to five, even though we both love this horse. You hit it around the head. I hate this horse, and I love her at the same time. I, I, I picked her to win all three times and got two of them. That's the good news. The bad news, and you're exactly right, the, the, the Daily Show is giving me a headache lately <laughs> for these horses because I cannot predict the odds. I thought she'd be like 3-5. to five. Yeah. And I thought I'm very busy in the next race would be like eight to five and they flipped. Yeah. And I liked this one better, but anyway, she looked good. Here's the deal. This race is kind of wide open coming up for the breeders cup uh, for the juvenile Phillies. So I think she's got a shot. I, I don't know that the juvenile itself is wide open though, but the juvenile Phillies, I think it's wide open. Uh, yeah, the juvenile itself, I think, is an open and shut case. Uh, I, I think yeah. there's a lot of horses running for second in there. The juvenile Phillies, I agree with you, absolutely wide open. There's not much in California. Um, it's going to be New York or Kentucky, most likely. Uh, and Chocolate Gelato definitely has to be part of that conversation. This horse was was touted in that first race, got heavily bet out of the Pletcher Barn, uh, ran on opening day, I believe it was. It was opening day or opening weekend there, uh, which is generally when you see Pletcher debut some of his best two-year-olds. She didn't quite live up to the billing then, but she has looked phenomenal in the last two and honestly never looked like a loser once they hit the turn in this race. Uh, came home in 130. A little bit slow for that final two furlongs, but again, the slop was uh, playing slower this day, so I, I'm not going to knock her too bad for the time. No, me neither. I, I thought she looked really good. Uh, any interest in anyone else from this race? No. 
I agree. I, I think <laughs> you'll probably see your my girl go, um, but I don't. I don't have any interest there. All right, let's jump over. Oop, the way I was not a winning year, and you lose, Wea. All right, let's jump to the Pilgrim. Great two on the outer turf, and this is where the aforementioned I'm very busy did not get the job done. Went right up to Major Jude's throat latch, could not get by. Major Jude for Pletcher ends up getting the win. I read up, gets a 76 buyer here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? You thought I've, uh, uh, I'm very busy was a superstar and possibly Breeders Cup winner going into this race. I'm guessing your opinion has changed a little bit, or are you just no excited chance. to get a better price now? Zero chance. I want no. I have no interest, and in I'm very busy. I ranked Major Dude, and I'm very busy in the rankings just because I don't know who's going to come over from Europe. Uh, you know, all of them that are going to come for Europe. But I thought I'm very busy would run great. He looked like he was getting ready to run great. And he did not. He stopped. And Major Dude re-rallied and won. Absolutely mysterious night is a single for me in this race now. Yeah, I'll, I'll see who comes over. But Mysterious Night should be your favorite. or should It should be a pretty heavy favorite unless you have some superstars coming over. We're not going to cover the multiple French races, by the way, that were winning your ends over the weekend. I don't know if you saw that, Aaron. There are like five races over in France as well. I, yeah. I, we're, just not, we're not going there. There's too much going on. <laughs> no. No. Oh. All right, uh, let's head to the next winning you're in here. That's going to be the ak, ak Oh, boy. All right, we'll talk about the ak, ak. Oh, man. <laughs> Scrolling down here, going to Saturday's action from Santa Anita. Uh, ak, ak grade three, $300,000. And Senor Buscador <laughs> gets the job done. Uh, I mean, I guess that we got to start here with the, the real question of what the heck happened to Speaker's Corner? Uh, absolute no-show here. Never made the lead. Just kind of spun his wheels around the far turn and just quit. Uh, what happened, man? I think he's done. I think I think Flight Lion and Life is Good back to back cooked you. So, <laughs> we, you know, I, I went against him in here. I, I I never had any any thought of playing him because he just looks so done at Del Mar. Now you show up at Churchill, it's like ah, no, no, thank you. Um, listen, Senior Buscador, this was awesome to watch for me personally because I've loved this horse for a long time. Yeah. Horse was gone like two years, and it's like, oh no, we'll never see him again. He's gonna, and then he wins a Grade Three. Now he's going to the Breeders' Cup. Can't wait to see my buddy Senior Buscador. Cannot wait. I, you are, you're excited to see Flight Line. I'm excited to see Senior Buscador. Fincher might have a couple there. Who, who's that other horse he had in, uh, at Saratoga? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I can't think of the horse's name. Uh, one of one of the stakes at Del Mar after breaking his maiden at Lone Star, then ran out to Saratoga, had yeah. to switch to the Atras Barn. Uh, is won twice since. Uh, he also may end up in the Breeders' Cup for Fincher there as well. So interesting to see Fincher there. Uh, someone that we know pretty well because of the Sam Houston Lone Star uh, Bremington Park circuit, but I don't think the general public knows quite as well. Yeah, no, I agree. And listen, Ke Kevin, if you watch this race back, it looks like Senior Buscador is like stopped and is not going to run. And it's like, oh my God, you're stopping in mid-stretch and going to get caught? Yeah, smash ticket. There you go. Thank you, Carr. But then... <laughs> Senior Buscador re-rallies because he is a legend and he is a fighter. Listen, I don't think he's got any shot in the mile, but I'm excited to watch him. I just, I want an announcer to be like, doo, 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 Senor <laughs> Buscador. <laughs> I was I so happy. That. I tell you what, though, I think a two-turn mile will will be good for him. Like, I think it'll be better than the one turn. He's not going to win. I'm, I'm going to stop. He's not going to win. Are you going to have him? Are you going to have him in the top three? Oh, absolutely. Is he going to make is he going to make the consensus top 4? That's really what we have to know here. All right, let's uh, let's head back to Belmont here. We've had the Champagne Stakes. Got to find this one now. Do 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 do. do. Um, Belmont Turf Sprint. Uh, we'll go to the Miss Gorilla cuz that's also a winning year in. Cuz hey, why all right. not? Back when I could all the winning year in. So we'll just do this one here. Uh <laughs> Pleasant Passage goes gate to wire, knocks off Free Look and Be Your Best. Um <laughs> I, I seriously, man, I would love an announcer to do that. Uh Free Look and Be Your Best, the two favorites in this race. <sighs> I kind of want to give Pleasant Passage some credit here, but I also kind of want to say this turf, turf course completely played towards speed as soon as it got any rain on it, and that's why Pleasant Perfect won here. Or well, Pleasant this one really one pissed year. this one just pissed me off to no end because you didn't know that Pleasant uh, Pleasant uh, Passage was going to get that kind of trip. This is not a speed horse coming into the race whatsoever. Where was the five? Where like why did the five not go to the lead coming out of sprints? I, I was so pissed. It was. I'm no just idea. kidding. Should have made the lead. I have no idea. And I, I played, I had, I had some money on the five and an exacto because I thought the horse would go right to the front. And I think that would have helped a lot, but the, the lead fell to the three credit, the three for taking control and winning, but I never could have guessed that that was going to happen. And, and so my horse free look, I thought ran okay, but just was not going to catch that horse out loose on the lead. So 
I don't know what to take from this. I, I kind of still like free look a little bit better moving forward, but I don't know if I really want anybody out of this. I'm willing to give free look another chance. I, I, I thought free look ran well considering the conditions and the pace. It went 114, almost 115 for six furlongs. I, I thought I thought free look ran an okay race considering everything that happened. And this turf track was a mess. It's going to be completely different what you're going to see at Keeneland versus what you saw here. We'll see if any of these horses go. Um, I, I I would hope free look goes, but we'll see. Be Your Best also ran very well at Saratoga. So we'll see what happens here. But yeah, for my money, not all that interested in what's uh, what's coming out of this one. I got Slack popping up. I'm telling you, man, I need magic back. I love this. Yeah. This is my favorite thing. You control in the, the, the show. Me just, just trying to get through it, baby. Just trying to fight through it. All right. We got Eddie D. I don't care about the AD. Come on. Where's Give me another win and you're in. Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Woodward. Look at class. Oh, there Champagne. it is. Grade one champagne, half is. a million dollars. The, I would not have guessed it. It was the largest purse of the Saturday card. When you have three preps for the Breeders' Cup Classic. But here it is, grade one champagne, a mile at the big A here. I'm just going to – blazing sevens, baby. I love it. It's at 19 to 1. Uh, if you watch the Daily Show, talked about this one, being able to get the setup and get the win. And that's really what this was, right? Blazing sevens is not the best horse in this race. It got the best setup in this race. Yeah, you called it perfectly. It happened. It was great. And the porn sites are back. So that's yeah. good, too. Everything's going great on the show. Listen, <laughs> uh, Blazing Sevens, you're right. You got perfect setup. And again, though, I always say this. You still have to go take advantage of it, right? And he fired. And that's that had to happen. And he did a really nice job. And uh, yeah, I give him a lot of credit. I Again, the, the problem with these horses here is you got that monster out in Santa Anita. And unless he stumbles this weekend, it doesn't run very well. There's not a lot of hope for some of these. Like Blazing Sevens ran okay, but I don't know, right? I would be interested in Blazing Sevens underneath. I think that's I, I think watching Blazing Sevens get this trip and, and what I expect from a speed perspective in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, I think this style sets up well for Blazing Sevens to be able to run there. And Chad Brown and Keeneland, he's done pretty good there with, with the three-year-olds going through the, the derby circuit. I wouldn't be shocked if this one runs well on, on Breeders' Cup Day. They're all running for second in my mind, and we'll get to that in a second. We'll we'll fast forward here. The last winning you're in of the weekend was on Sunday. It was supposed to be on Friday, but it was on Sunday, and I won't get tricked by this. I just need to find it now. It was over at Santa Anita. It was not the Zenyatta. It was Speakeasy. the Speakeasy, which is ungraded, but Speedboat Beach, your track record holder at Del Mar for five and a half furlongs, takes it down, getting a 75 buyer. <laughs> Only 29 less than his debut. So maybe regressed a little bit here uh, from that perspective. Uh, Aaron, what did you think of this one? I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, I watched it on my phone the first <clears throat> time, and I was out doing something, and I thought, oh, that was okay. That was fine. I rewatched it, and it's like I don't think he was – he in the stretch, he was kind of looking around like it was – he was kind of acting weird, I thought, a little bit. I don't think this is a 75 buyer. I think the buyer is low. Show me another race where they go 21, 43, and 1, and they finish in 12s, and the horse gets a 75 buyer when they're 2. <laughs> I'll wait. Well, that's fair. Like, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know. I, I didn't think he looked quite as impressive here. I, 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 don't, know what the, I don't know what the buyer means, but I, he didn't look that great here, I didn't think. I will agree with you there. I don't think he looked as good here as he did in his debut. Maybe dirt is the better surface for this. Maybe Baffert's just better training on dirt, which, oh, by the way, we all know is very, very true. Yeah. Um, but you expected him to pick up the turf here because of the Bayern influence, who's been a pretty good turf sprinting sire. Speedboat Beach, we both thought was in this race because of where Cave Rock's going to go, which is the horse we were referring to earlier, who we both believe is going to be a very heavy favorite in the Bruce Cup Juvenile. What do you do with Speedboat Beach now? I think you go on to the turf, right? I mean, that's kind of the plan. You want to try it. Uh, you know, he did win. I don't know if I'm going to bet him at a short price. It depends on his price, right? He should improve second on the turf. That's an angle we talk about a lot, but I guess that's where you go with them. I, I don't know. I think they probably wanted to see a little bit better performance out of it. But again, a win is a win. Who else is really pointing to that race right now that you're excited about? I, I don't have anybody right now for that one. So, I mean, he's in the mix and I think you go give it a shot. But we said it before the race and it, it kind of seems that way after the race too. It says more about, hey, Cave Rock's my Breeders' Cup juvenile horse. That's who I'm excited about. Let's try to go win another one with this horse. And then the chips will fall how they fall after the Breeders' Cup's over. Yeah, this is, this is going to be an interesting race as well. Uh, someone in the chat mentioned the Adam Rice horse. I don't, I can't find it right here. The Adam Rice horse is actually the Chad Brown horse that you really liked, that you yeah. played back and won last time. Yep. Going to be one of the favorites in this race. Um, I, I think this is pretty wide open. It'll be interesting to see who comes from overseas. Generally, this race is not won by overseas horses. By like two years ago, there was an overseas champion 
uh, international champion who won the juvenile turf sprint. Um, so we have had it happen before in these turf sprints. So we'll see what how this division specifically looks comes race day. But this, I think Speedboat Beach, you have to at least consider. I thought this was a pretty good race considering his first time turf. And they went freaking 21 flat, 43 and one, and they came home in 55 and one. So yeah. not bad. No, I mean, I, I think... I think he's a player, but again, I, I kind of need to see this field as a whole. There's just not been a whole lot that stood out. This this was a good race, but it's not a jump off the page at you type of race. All right. You want to blow your mind? Yes. Breeders' Cup's in one month. We are literally <laughs> one month away from this shindig going down at Keeneland. It feels like it really not, not crept up, like raced up. Like I cannot believe we're going to be in Kentucky in a month watching these horses go in circles. I did five Breeders' Cup uh, division rankings videos today, and I kept saying the Breeders' Cup is a month away, and I didn't really believe it, but the calendar told me that. I totally agree. This year, I don't know what it is about this year, just flown by. Like, I feel like Saratoga should be starting right now, right? And it's been over for a month. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, it's it's just crazy. I mean, it just it's unbelievable how fast this has gone. Obviously, yep. we've done a lot more videos, things like that. I think that's probably contributed to it because we've been yep. very busy trying to pump out as much content for people as they can get. Uh, and hopefully, you guys are enjoying everything that we are doing. Uh, we've got the Dudes Who Bet Daily that is going with Aaron and his dad. Uh, or, I'm sorry, Dudes Who Bet Sports is going twice a week with Aaron and your dad. We've got Blinkers Off coming at you every Thursday. Magic Mike's show Monday and Thursday. We've got Dudes Who Bet Daily Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday with Best Bets every single day. We're previewing every stakes race over the weekends, which we'll continue to do. So make sure you're subscribed to Racing Dudes or YouTube backslash Racing Dudes to so be alerted whenever we go live on air, whenever we put up these videos. We're trying to help out people as much as possible with the free content to get you out there and check it out. Um, all right, we're going to talk about football a little bit. If anyone has questions in the turn, well, let's jump into this real quick. So we flipped yeah. over the tournaments. So we're doing tournaments every two weeks, and it was only subscribers. Now the tournaments are open to anybody. So anyone who wants to play, you can get in and play. We are giving away $500 in the tournament final. All you got to do is finish in the top five of the tournament or top one of every five. So if there's 35 people to enter, the top seven. Go to that finals. No cost to get to the finals. 20 bucks to enter the first tournament. We're trying to do one a month. I don't know if we've picked the date for this month yet. Have we yet, Aaron? This weekend. Bang. It's like, it's like oh, wow. Just serendipitous as hell here. All so, right. So so this is the this is the thing. This weekend, we're going to do it. We will also, we're planning to do a guide this weekend. We're not going to do a guide. So no guide tournament we're going to do. We're not doing a guide because it's all going to be focused towards a Breeders' Cup now. We're doing like a supplemental free Breeders' Cup guide. That'll come out in a week or two. So we decided no on uh, the guide this weekend, but yes on pushing out a lot more Breeders' Cup content and getting more ready for that Breeders' Cup. Obviously, Breeders' Cup guide, one of the biggest ones we do. So yes on the tournament, no on the guide. So tournament this weekend. Excellent. All right, so we're going to have a tournament this weekend. Do we know where? Keeneland, right? Keeneland, yes. All right, so it's going to be full card Keeneland on Saturday, $20 to enter, one in every five people advance to the finals, which is a $500 free roll, and added $250 if you are a subscriber. So you can get up to $750 for free. 20 bucks to enter. The winner's going to get a few hundred dollars if you win the tournament. And then the top five will also qualify in to the finals. Are we going to go live this Saturday? Are we doing a live show? Live show this Saturday. Yes. Look at that. And a live show. It's all coming at you here in real time. I love it. Uh, Aaron, are we going to have a uh, an Oklahoma emergency pod? Or did you guys just bury them already? An hour and 12 minutes away from that. It'll be more than just the OU emergency pod. We'll recap everything, kind of go over what's happened in this uh, first quarter of the football season, both NFL and NCAA. Yes, there will be a OU talk on that one as well. I have, yes, they're buried for me. They're done. I, I'm I'm ripping up my virtual tickets for Dylan Gabriel winning the Heisman. It's just well, <laughs> and if he didn't get concussed, I wouldn't be ripping them up yet. But You should probably rip them up even if he didn't. Um, it's not good. Come on. I, oh, you that well, I'll save it for the show. I'll save it for the show. We got we got it's 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 going downhill quickly. Let's put it that way. If you're looking for football content, make sure you check out uh, Dudes Who Bet Sports there, Dudes Who Bet Sports on Thursday. Make sure you're checking out Slim and Samos halftime bet of Palooza. My best bets in football went to four and oh this week. Uh and the best Thursday, the Thursday second half bets are three and one. So we're seven and one on that halftime show. It's a fun thing to do. Thursday, every Thursday game at halftime, Slim and I'll be out there checking that out. I tank hit the nail on the head here. We got to talk a little about MNF. Monday Night Football coming up. And again, if you have any more questions, Lance, a couple more here after we talk about football. So feel free to fire them off in the chat. Uh, who you got, man? We got the Rams catching a point and a half at San Francisco, Jimmy Garoppolo, but no Williams. So the offensive line going to be banged up here for San Fran. I kind of think the Rams are going to win. I, I like the Rams in this game. I, I think it's going to be close. It's always close between these two. I, I just think the Rams have a few more playmakers. And I think you get in a close game and 
So final drive, the offense needs to make a play. I think the Rams, you know, I trust them to do it. So I'm going to go with the Rams. Yeah, I, I'm. I took Rams first half. I, I like that more than the full game. You're catching a half point. Um, I want to lean first half under because I kind of feel like San Francisco is going to want to come out and slow the ball down and run the ball. But I wouldn't be shocked if they come out and throw it. So I didn't bet the total, but I'm, I'm going to play Rams uh, plus a half point in the first half. Watch the first half and then decide if we're going anywhere for the second half. Yeah, no, that makes total sense. Uh, it'll be a slobber knocker, right? I mean, it always is between these two teams. I think it'll be a really good game. But again, quarterbacks, wide receivers, skill people all favor the Rams. If the game is tight, the Rams will win. Yeah, the Rams are catching a point and a half. It was as high as two and a half today and then got bet back down to a point and a half. It's been about point, point and a half all week. Um, I, I was surprised. I think the wrong team is favored here, but I don't think either team should be minus three. So to me, it's a pretty, it, you know, anything between two and either side really is not all that. And I watch the game's going to end up one, one way or the other, but usually two to, between the twos is not that important of numbers to get. Yeah, no, exactly. And I, I'm with you. I, I think at rivalry game on the road, maybe Rams minus two and a half, right? Yeah. I mean, you think, I think you think back to like the championship game last year, the Rams dominated them. And then San Francisco kind of came flying back in the fourth quarter, had a chance to win the game late. But the Rams really controlled that game for the mass majority. But the big concern here is the Rams can't run the ball. They need to figure out how the hell they're going to run the ball. And, and San Francisco's going to need to figure out the same thing without Trent Williams. It's going to be interesting because there's two teams that want to establish the run and neither of them can establish the run. Yep, absolutely. Neither one of them can run at all. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for joining us for this uh, special Magic Mike episode. Uh, Aaron, you're in charge of the chat, not me. For I got it. Magic Mike episode. Uh, we got Aaron joining us here. He's going to be back on for, for Dudes Who Bet Sports a little bit later to talk all about the college football and NFL weekend that was. Uh, thanks for joining us for these previews of the Breeders' Cup. We're excited. We're only a month away. It's going to be a ton of Breeders' Cup talk leading up to here. We get to see Cave Rock this weekend. Magic mentioned it. Make sure you get your Breeders' Cup futures in now if you want to get them at any type of plus money, even if you can. I haven't even looked at that. You think you can get them at plus money right now? I don't know. I haven't looked at that either. I bet you can right now. Yeah. You think so? Yeah. Hey, he should be the perennial favorite. Excited to see him run again this weekend. It's going to be fun. These are pretty much the last preps we're going to see here this weekend. Then everyone's going to head over to Keeneland to get this thing going. And, of course, we have Keeneland going this weekend as well. So make sure you check out the website. You've got Rockets, you've got Sama Bombs, you've got the Premium Picks all going this weekend for Keeneland, for Aqueduct, and all the other fun tracks. So thank you very much for joining us. We Well, he'll, he will see you in what, an hour or something like that? Hour and eight minutes. There you go. Aaron will see you in an hour and eight minutes. I will be back on Wednesday for Dudes Who Bet Daily at noon with all of our best bets around the sports and horse racing world. Until then, everybody, have a good one. May all your photo finishes be winning ones. And we'll see you in Keeneland. Weekend racing, it's time to recap it. And who better to do it than Michael New Magic? Two bros slash pros who cover the highs and lows of racing around the globe on every one of their shows. Real fans look forward to these guys and their last on because they know they're not talking out of their royal ascot. What they say makes sense. So, ladies and gents, sit back and relax as Blinkers Off presents The Magic Mike Show, where you hear the experts speak. The Magic Mike Show. Tune into the show show every week the magic mic show you can trust the show is the bomb because it's being brought to you by racing dudes.com